Uh, today, we're going to talk about the most, this is kind of a good transition between the fire series and where we're going. The fire series was about us putting the logs on the fire. Uh, today is the most, uh, theolog- uh, many theologians have said this, Bill Bright said this, that today's topic, which is fasting, did you hear the, all the amens? Everybody's like, <laughs> oh, yes, thank you. You're going to preach on fasting. Fasting is the most powerful spiritual discipline of all the Christian disciplines. Fasting is. And it's amazing because we don't get excited. It's really not amazing because we don't get excited about it because we all have a flesh. We all have a flesh, don't we? And I'm telling you, my flesh never gets excited this time of year about fasting, but fasting is so important. In the business world, you've heard this phrase probably before, eat the frog first. In fact, there's a book called Eat the Frog First. How many of you have heard of the book? Okay, so if you eat the frog first, what it means is get the hard stuff out of the way first. Get the discipline out of the way first. Do what's difficult, do what's hard. And fasting, according to my flesh, is difficult and it is hard, but the reward is incredible. And I'm going to talk about it today because next week, next Sunday, officially as a church, you can start it whenever you want, but As a church family, next Sunday, we start our fast. We go for 21 days, and I'll talk about it because most most people, even a lot of Christians, don't have a concept of what fasting really is, or they don't have their head wrapped around it. There's different types of fast. I'll share a few of those with you. Maybe if you have any experience fasting, some things you could do to ease your way into it. Uh, It can be difficult. But the flesh is the flesh, and the flesh doesn't like discipline, does it? But I want you to know something, that fasting and the discipline of fasting can bring great reward into your life. And we're believing that 2021 is going to be a different year, a better year for us, right? Now, I have a feeling in sense in my spirit that the enemy is ramping up his attack on the church and and really amping up his attack on our freedom because if we're free, the, the, how many of you know Jesus wants you free? How many of you know the enemy wants you bound up, locked up, and imprisoned? He wants you held captive. But I prophesy over you, this year is going to be a year of freedom for you. Even if the enemy is attacking all around, You don't have to go that way. You don't have to let that become your story. In fact, I just want to say this to you. God picked you and God chose you and me, us, to be alive at this time that we're alive. You're picked by God to be alive right now. That means he trusts you. That means that he will empower you if you will receive it. And fasting is one of the tools that will help us. And because we're going to eat the frog first, meaning we're going to take the discipline at the beginning of the year. We always, our our philosophy of ministry around here is give God your best and give God your best first. Do it first, the first thing. And so at the beginning of the year in January, we're going to give God our best. We're going to deny the flesh and we're going to uh, seek God and we're going to do it in such a way that we're seeking his face, not just his hand. Most people seek God for his hand. God, I need a job. God, I need my marriage healed. And you do need all those things. But fasting done this way where you're seeking God and you're seeking God first and you're seeking his face means you're seeking his presence and you're practicing his presence creates an environment where you get all your needs met anyway. Fasting has many, many examples in the Bible. Fasting is an Old Testament concept. It's a New Testament concept. Moses did two 40-day fasts. Now, a 40-day fast, let me just say, a 40-day fast is a supernatural fast because it is really medically not possible to fast water and food for 40 days. And I'm not putting you on a water and food fast. I'm going to talk to you with some balance and give you some guidelines that the scripture has for us. And then you get to decide what type of fast you're going to do. 
But I'm believing that God's going to do some good things. We're, the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to send you some emails. Make sure we have your email. If we don't have your email, put it on the red card. We'll send some email instructions about what we're all praying for corporately so we can believe God together. Now, I want to encourage you as we do fast, you're going to have the tendency, because this is human nature tendency, to list your petitions before God, and you should do that. But don't make it all about you. Let your fasting be about some of the broader things that we're believing for. We're believing for a revival here in our church. We're believing that God attracts souls to come in, that people get saved. We're believing that ministry is thriving and vibrant, that all the ministries have more than enough volunteers. We're believing, God, that we're adding out, we're adding seats at both of our campuses. We're believing, God, that we're having to add services. We're believing, God, for a lot of things for us as a church, but we're going to go broader than that. We're going to pray for our nation. We're going to pray for God to break the spirit of deception that is on so many. Even a lot of Christians are under deception right now. They don't understand what's going on with this socialism and communism stuff. Did I just say that? Yes, I did. I'm going to talk about it from time to time just because I wouldn't have done it years ago as much because it wasn't an issue, but it is today. Our nation is on the brink of going into, so, and why is socialism? Oh, isn't it just an option of governmental? No, socialism and communism at its core, there's a hair that changes one to the other, just a hair, they're so close. And both of them, the reason it's important for the church to be aware and not to be blind or stick your head in the sand like an ostrich and act like, oh, you're this or you're that. No, you cannot do that. You have to be aware of the enemy's tactic. The reason socialism and communism is such a big deal is because both of them are formed on the foundation of a godless country or a government uh, that is built on atheism. You cannot have successful socialism or communism and be worshiping the God because the God the only God, capital G, he's a God of freedom. And in those, you don't get that. And I know I always get some emails and some people get upset, but I love you. I'm not mad at anybody. Our fight is not against people. Remember that. The fight is against principalities and powers in the air of darkness. And we're free people, and we are going to stay open with our eyes. We're not going to be blinded by the by the world. Are you with me? Okay. So always remember when I talk about stuff like that, I'm not mad at anybody. I'm not like those communists. I'm not that way. Okay. It might feel that way, but I'm not. I love, I love everybody. And we're going to pray that God keeps us free, keeps our nation free, and that we become a beacon of hope and a beacon of light. <laughs> Moses fasted. Um, Fasting, one thing it does for you is it, it returns you to your first love. If you've lost that first love feeling of, of intimacy with God, fasting, if you'll do it right and you'll be serious about it, intentional about it, it'll return you to that first love. King David fasted. Um, I mentioned Moses fasted two 40-day fasts. Jesus fasted for 40 days. And the Holy Spirit will reveal to you during a fast many times your true spiritual condition. And that's important to know because sometimes we think, oh, I'm great with God. Until you fast, you go, oh, man, I, I, I see the lights come on. I'm not where I need to be. It'll transform your prayer life too because if you just fast, you're just getting some of the physical benefits of a fast. But if you fast and pray, which you're supposed to do spiritually, that's the spiritual discipline, is fasting and praying. It will change your prayer life. It'll change your prayer life. And it will bring a dynamic revival to your own soul. But if we do it as a family, it will bring a corporate revival to the family. And so the invitation is to fast. This is not a directive that you have to fast. I'm not telling you what kind of a fast to do. I'm going to give you some things that might help you. But I want to invite you to fast during these 
21 days starting next Sunday together as a church family so that we can direct our focus. Do you know the most effective way to get stuff done is through focus. When you focus, when we focus as a church family, we're focused and we're looking forward and we're focused like a laser beam on what we're believing for. And that's why these daily emails that we're gonna, we're gonna send out are going to be beneficial to you. They're going to bless you. Uh, you'll like them. So um, we're gonna focus together as a family, but we're gonna believe God for some breakthrough that you need at home. Some of you need some job breakthrough, some financial breakthrough. You've got some stuff to sell, some, maybe some stuff to buy. I don't know what it is. You've got some relationship stuff. But we're gonna believe God together as a church family. Are you with me? Man, I, I'm telling you, we love you guys so much and we want the best for you. We want it going well for you at home. We want it going well for you on your jobs and in your businesses. And it, we know this, that if, if it is going well for you in your marriages, your parenting, your relationships, your jobs, whatever it is that you put your hands to, that we know that things will go well for us here too but it's kind of like a circle. It's kind of like a ping pong effect because if it goes well for you here spiritually, it's going to go well at job, at home. Are you with me? So it's kind of like, which one's it in right now? Well, it's in both and it's going to stay that way in Jesus name. Amen. So what we're going to do is we're going to, through this fast, I want to encourage you. We're going to humble ourselves. We're going to repent constantly. We're going to ask God through prayer to show us our lives and to reveal himself to us. We're gonna keep our attitude right. Attitude is everything. A attitude is everything. Man, you get your attitude right, it's your attitude is your perspective. Get your attitude right towards God. Get your attitude right towards the word. Get your attitude right toward the priorities. God's gonna get other stuff right. So what we're going to do is we're going to be very intentional and very sensitive to his voice. We're going to start this series, The Ear, and we're going to talk about how to hear and how to discern his voice, especially I think it's going to be very appropriate as we're fasting together because the clarity of your ear and, and spiritual sensitivity is going to go up during this time. You're going to hear God clearer in Jesus' name than you ever have had before your ear sensitivity Ooh, was that you lord you'll find yourself doing things you would have never done before you'll find yourself in positions you would have never been in before like because you're fasting and because you're sensitive holy spirit's going to give you directives to do things that you were you were just like noise was keeping you from hearing and the lord's going to say go go talk to that person just go start a conversation he won't even tell you what to say yet until you're in the conversation. That's just the way the Lord does, right? Once in a while, he'll give you a directive before. Go tell them this. And then once you do that, the floodgates open. This is going to be good fast. This is going to be a good fast. Some good things are going to happen. I'm praying, my prayer for you is that your appetite for prayer increases greatly. Our prayer ministry is really gearing up for this. We have some people involved in our prayer ministry that are very, very intent on prayer. It's their call. They are, they are wrapped up in it. I, I love it. And so our prayer meeting that we do, we're not going to keep you long. We're not going to wear you out, but we're going to have a moment of prayer, a time of prayer right at the end of the service, 10 minutes. We'll give you time to get your kids, come back in. It's the beginning of the year, the first Sunday of the year. We're going to pray together. I'm excited about it because I'm believing. First of all, I know what prayer does. When you connect with God, is God there all the time? Absolutely. He's there all the time. But when you are intentional about connecting with him and bringing things before him and calling on him with your mixing your faith and your intention with it, good things happen. So stick around for a few minutes. You'll get to eat. <laughs> You'll get to eat. And so, um, you know, believe God for some, some things to happen. Now, let me give you a little few thoughts. I could preach on fasting for a couple, two or three weeks probably and not wear it out. But what we do, and this is what one of the purpose of the fast is, is uh, how many of you have heard of spring cleaning? 
Well, at the beginning of the year, we're going to clean out the soul. And what we're going to do is we have a tendency, human nature has a tendency to hoard things. How many of you have a hard time throwing papers away? I might need that paper. Others of you, you can throw everything away. But some of you, you hang on to them. Like, I might need that. I file that, file that, file that. And all of a sudden, you've got files you hadn't looked at in 15 years. How do I know this? It's possible I've heard about it. But your soul is the same way. You have things that have happened. You have pains in life. You have hurt in life. And during the fast is a good time. Uh, I've seen people who have gone through a fast and they had moment with God where they had time with God and they were healed of a childhood hurt that took place that they had held on to for years and didn't realize that was still in their soul causing them pain and causing them hurt. And I want to encourage you, be sensitive to allow God to get in your business and bring some of that healing to you. You may have moments of weeping and wailing. Let it happen. Don't resist that. Let God heal you. Maybe your dad said something to you. Maybe the coach said something to you. Maybe your friend said something to you. Maybe you did something and you deal with shame all of these years later and you've tucked it in and hidden it and and haven't dealt with it. But I prophesy over you in Jesus' name during this fast, shame is going to be dealt with. Guilt is going to be dealt with. Hurt, uh, disappointment maybe some bad habits we've developed. And, you know, maybe it's your identity, maybe the way you see yourself. Heard recently of a a young woman who is just gorgeous and she thinks she's ugly. She don't see herself beautiful. You know, that needs healing. Because every other human being that looks at her says, she is gorgeous. It causes her to think differently, act differently, dress differently, and present differently. But that story could be changed to you with your work, with your dreams. Maybe you just, your dreams are this big and you just, you're limited. I'm praying for you personally for some of those things to be broken in your life. Because the big, the big word that keeps popping up in my spirit is the word freedom, 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 freedom from guilt, freedom from shame, freedom from hurt. You're gonna be free in Jesus' name. I'm getting cold chills thinking about you being free, me being free, us being free. Come on. We're gonna walk this stuff out. Nothing, no, no addiction, no fear is going to have a grip on us. We're free, but we're going to discipline ourselves. Hebrews chapter 12 is uh, about discipline. Listen to what he says in verse 11. At the time, no discipline brings joy. It's not like we're going, we're going to fast. Woohoo! We're fasting. No. Why? Because fasting is difficult. No discipline brings joy, but seems grievous and painful. See, I want to be honest with you because if I'm not honest with you about fasting, you're going to think you failed and everybody else has it going on, but you don't. I'm going to bring the reality of it to you. But watch this. At the time, it seems grievous and painful, but afterwards, oh, it yields a peaceable fruit of righteousness in your spirit to those who have been trained by it. So what I want to uh, encourage you to do is as you fast, let it train you. Let it shape you. Let it make you and mold you. And he says, let it conform you into God's will and purpose, into God's thought and God's action for your life, resulting in right living and right standing with God. Amen. 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 That's what's going to happen. So let me get to share with you a few different types of fast that you can participate in. There's one called a selective fast. A selective fast is like a Daniel fast. That's where you say, okay, I'm not going to eat sweets 
um, and Daniel ate vegetables only for those 21 days. He said, I'm not going to do sweets or meats. And that's a Daniel fast. A lot of people do have a Daniel fast. It's very healthy for you. Uh, I want to give you the disclaimer. If you have any health conditions, ask a professional if you should be fasting, but check with your doctor maybe. But I just want you to know there is a fast you can do no matter what your medical condition is. You can do a soul fast. Now, what a soul fast is, a soul fast is where your soul is addicted to some things like the news. How many of you know you can turn the news off? A soul fast could be Netflix. A soul fast could be uh, maybe, you're, maybe you just love uh, classic rock or country or any type of secular music that you're just, it's not even that it's a sin. It's just that you go, you know what? It's not that meat's a sin either, but you're going to fast something for a period. You're going to give something up in your soul. So I'm not going to watch and whatever. You're not going to watch the news or I'm not telling you what to do, Just but whatever you choose, you could do a soul fast. By the way, if you don't have any experience fasting, maybe start off with a soul fast or a blend thereof, a hybrid of soul fast, cut something out that your soul loves and is addicted to, and then also maybe cut out a certain food, all right? So that's a soul fast. Another type of fast that is in the Bible is a partial fast. It's a Jewish fast. A Jewish fast, uh, the modern day terminology and definition, the medical, all the nutritionists call this fast intermittent fasting. Have you heard of intermittent fasting? Intermittent fasting means that you take a certain number of hours throughout the day. Usually it's the same number of hours. Let's just say, for example, a real popular intermittent fasting or a Jewish fast is you eat from eight o'clock to five o'clock. That's your window. You get to eat during that time. And then at five o'clock, you cut it off all evening long. You only drink liquids and juice and then you sleep through the night. You're going to be sleeping anyway, so that's a fast, right? Thank God for the nighttime because I don't have to be conscious when I'm fasting. But you can fast from 5 o'clock on. You can also variate that. So you can change that from you can start eating at noon and stop eating at 5. Or you can shrink that window a little bit and say, I only eat during these two hours. Now, why am I bringing these things up? Because the goal is it's not always that you do it by a legalistic or a regiment. It's that you deny your flesh. Now, Jesus talked about that. He said, and in the scripture, it talks about it many times that our God, we think that the God of the world is money and it is when you talk about the world, but my God and your God is our stomach. I mean, if we're really gonna be honest with you, have you heard of the phrase hangry? Do you know any people that get hangry? Amen. That is a combination of anger and hunger, and the anger is motivated by the hunger. Oh, I'm preaching real good in this <laughs> Baptist church today. All right. So what happens is our stomach, if it has no discipline whatsoever, in Romans, Paul talks about a word and I'm not teaching this whole subject, but I'll give you the Greek meaning of the word. You've probably heard it, but I bet you might not know the Greek definition of that word, and that is the word lasciviousness. We've always interpreted the word, we become lascivious in our flesh, and he lists all these sins, but most of us think the word lascivious means to be sexually just no restraint. But in the Greek, it's talking about your stomach having no restraint. What you want? you eat. And what happens is, and I'm saying this from experience. <laughs> this is not theory, baby. This is me walking into quick trip <laughs> and walking by that donut case. And there's a particular donut, sometimes two. And they'll scream, and they'll, I promise you, they've got even a little movement. They'll scream, Darren, purchase me. You don't even have to eat me, just purchase me. How do I know this? Because it's happened to me. And I'm going to tell you when it has intensified is in January. Yeah. 
during the fast. I want to give you a little clue on how to fast, okay? Every day and many times during the day, especially if you're new to fasting, you have to do what I've been teaching you for a few years now, repent. See, the way the devil defeats most people during a fast is he tempts them so bad. By the way, don't think it's strange that during your fast, your temptation chart goes off. Don't be shamed by it. Don't be guilted by it. It happened to Jesus at the end of his 40-day fast. That's when, that's when Satan came to him and brought him and tempted him here and tempted him there. What if Jesus would have thought, well, I'm really a failure at this paying for the sins of the world because I'm being tempted so bad I can't stand it. What's typically going to happen during a fast, if it is, if it is the strongest, most effective spiritual discipline you can participate in, then if you were the devil, <laughs> wouldn't you want to stop people and get them defeated and cause them to fail in their fast because it's going to open a door of sensitivity to hear God's voice. It's going to open up a door that causes people to break the bondages and the chains of addiction and the chains of you know, shame and guilt from sins and iniquities that have been passed down. Oh, I could teach on generational curses and iniquities that come because what has happened to so many of us is we have issues. You know what issues are. It's what everybody else has. <laughs> you don't have any, but other people have issues, right? But the truth is, is we all have issues. And typically, our strongest issues come from the iniquities of our parents and grandparents. I've watched people who are Christians, followers of Jesus, and all that comes out of their mouth is negativity and complaining. And when you trace the family line, either mama or grandma or dad or maybe both did the same thing. There's no condemnation, but somewhere, somebody has got to say enough is enough. No more negativity. I'll teach you how to do that in just a second. It's, it's, a, it's a simple break. You can do it. But if you were the devil, you'd try to get people to be feel, 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 because mo most people live by their feelings, not by what they know in their heart. And if the devil can get you feeling like a failure, feeling defeated, then he has a little victory. So what do you do? You make a commitment, and it's good for you to hear me saying this because you're going to know, oh, this is common. Everybody's experiencing this. That the devil is going to try to tempt you above and beyond ordinary. And if you are at quick trip, and you do give in or you see me at Quick Trip. <laughs> Come on, have some mercy on PD and pray for me. But if I go to that little sliding glass window and open it up and grab a donut, in my weakness, I don't want to do it. But if I did do it, you know what I got to do? Repent. I'm going to say, oh, devil, I might have goofed up for a minute but I'm right back on it today. Yeah. So what you do, this, is, this will keep you free in your life. This, this is across the board. You get back up, you repent, you have a contrite heart, and you say, okay, I didn't fail. I, start, I just start fresh today. Does that mean I have to go another whole 21 days? Yes. No, it doesn't. <laughs> no. no, just start fresh from where you're at, all right? You start fresh today. God's grace and mercy will strengthen you and he will touch you and empower you to have a, let's say you have three or four victorious days and you did good and you have a weekday. I'm teaching you how to do it because hardly anybody gets this thing right and does it 100% successful from day one. Be gracious with yourself, but don't give yourself a pass to go, well, just whatever now, it don't matter. I blew it, so it don't matter. Don't do that. Start fresh with a fresh attitude and a new attitude today. Are you with me? Now watch what happens. God will honor your efforts and he will come through for you. It'll be a blessing to you. Amen? Amen. And so, you know, 
make sure you're, during this time of fast, you're reading God's word. Make sure that I would encourage you to try to take, uh, practice his presence all day. This is really important. There's two things you want to do with it. You want to practice his presence all day. In other words, talk to him constantly, more than normal. Just talk to him about everything. Man, that kid's feet stink today. Lord, <laughs> help me. Uh, I like the... I like the look of that tree or whatever. You know, talk to him constantly. Be in communion, constant communication. Practice his presence all day long. But what I would encourage you to do is also pick a time. Maybe it's 7 in the evening. Maybe it's 10 in the morning. I don't know what your time will be. But pick a time that you take, and I'm not even going to be legalistic with you about this. Take 5 minutes, 10 minutes. Take an hour. Take 45 minutes and read your word and have a moment where you don't do anything else but where you talk to him, where you just talk to him, seek him, not his hand, seek his face, seek his presence during that hour, that time. And you'll begin to, the sensitivity of your hearing spiritually is going to increase. You're going to be in, uh, begin to s- just sense his direction. And then obey the word. I mean, there's going to be things that the Holy Spirit's going to bring up. I want you to do that. I want you, you've put this off too long. It's time to start doing it. He's going to do that Amen. with you. Uh, I would encourage you to serve one another. Men, be a man's man and lead your family by serving them. Amen. Women, be a woman's woman. I don't know what you're supposed to do. <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm teasing you. I'm, af- I'm just afraid of getting in trouble by telling you to do anything. You do what the Lord tells you to do. Man, I'm going to tell you what to do, though. <laughs> All right. I'm going home with her today. That's right. Yes. But, you know, make sure you're generous. Make sure you serve. I've really been trying to work on this one just to serve and not, and I'm even reluctant to say it because I want to say, well, I'm serving, but, but I'm trying to do this in ways that are where I get no credit and simple ways where I can serve someone and just be a servant. And in fact, <clears throat> you need to label, label your own identity as a servant. There's a problem in the body of Christ. And the reason I know there's a problem is because uh, our kids, when they come out of children's ministry or they come out of school, they, I never hear any of them say, like, what do you want to be when you grow up? They all, they all, they all say things like, I want to be a fireman. I want to be a doctor. I want to be a whatever. They'll name it. But Jesus said, to be the greatest, you become a servant. And I never hear kids saying, oh, pastor, I just want to be a servant when I grow up. It sounds weird because we, you know why it sounds weird? We don't hear it. But if you'll begin to label your own identity and tell your children when they're younger, you are a great servant. You are setting them up for success like you can't believe if you'll do that. Are you with me? Matthew 6, these are the words of our Lord and Savior Jesus. He said, when you fast, don't look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces while they fast so that others will see. Like, you all right? I'm fasting for Jesus. (laughs) Can you imagine them doing that? And Jesus going, come on. Fasting, you're fasting in faith. Put a smile. You may not feel it, but put a smile on your face. Amen. All right, now I'm going to wrap this up by sharing something with you to do during your fast, okay? This will break through for you big, big time. There's the fivefold ministry there's the pastor, the prophet, the evangelist, the apostle, the teacher. And that's a calling and it's a gift that God gives the body. But just like your prayer language, praying in the spirit, just like that, let me share something with you. Every believer can prophesy. Now you didn't hear a lot of amens, but let me share with you how to prophesy. Prophesy is 
prophecy is proclaiming the future. And I can share with you how to begin to prophesy in and over your own life and over your family and never miss it. Because prophetically, some people can miss if you prophesy outside of the will of God. I'm going to share with you how to prophesy within the confines of God's will. And the way to do it is to know your word. Go to the word and then prophesy. The reason this is so important is because it opens the door for you spiritually. And during this fast, this is going to be good. When you prophesy what the word already says about you, You are doing two things. One is you're proclaiming your future and you are relabeling your identity in Christ. The message just started just now getting really good. Because what I would encourage you to do is I would encourage you to go to a mirror. I've got a particular mirror that I go to and the reason I go to the mirror is because I'm seeing me in that mirror. And it is a challenge. I started doing this many, 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 many years ago. And it was very uncomfortable for me. I don't know why, but if you've never done it, try it. Let me know if it was comfortable or uncomfortable. Most people say it's uncomfortable. You go look in that mirror, you point at yourself, and you proclaim, and you relabel. See, some of you have been labeled as shy. Some of you have been labeled as angry. Some of you have been labeled as whatever label, and some of you have labeled yourself. I'm ugly. I'm fat. I'm, I'm just depressed. I'm whatever your label is. You go to that mirror and you use the labels and relabel what God has said about you. I encourage you to maybe prophesy you're an overcomer because the word says you are an overcomer. Go get in that mirror, get your finger pointing, get a little furrow on your eyebrow, get it on and get a little grit and grit in my teeth. I declare over you because you're breaking the spirit that has tried to hold you in captivity. And I declare over you that you are an overcomer in Jesus name. And then I'm putting a smile on because I'm agreeing with what he said about me. And I declare over you, Darren Carsons, you are prosperous. You have a mentality of abundance. Why? Because God says that you serve an abundant God. And I'm not going to tell you everything, but go to your word and get some things. I declare over you, you are joy filled. I declare over you, Darren, you are contagious with that joy. I declare over you and you begin to declare those things. I declare over you and I do this in the mirror and I say, I declare over you, you are healed from the top of your head to the toes of your feet by his stripes. You were healed. You are healed, and I receive that. I receive that over myself. I relabel myself. I am not what the world has said. I'm not even what I said about me. I am what you said about me. So you begin. So this prophecy thing, all of you can do this, just like all of you can pray. And if we will, because when you start off praying and you pray what the word says and you're praying it, then when you begin to practice prophesy, you declare you're going to eat from the fruit of your lips. Either way, you're going to do it. You're already eating from the fruit of your lips. So if we become intentional by prophetically declaring in agreement with his word, this is the good part. This is when it really gets fabulous. If you begin to practice this, all of the sudden up out of your spirit, you will begin to prophesy some things that are still under the will of God for you, but they will become even more specific for you. This is where if you couple your prayer life, you're praying in the spirit, where you're praying in tongues and praying in the spirit privately. And then you couple with that the prophecy of declaring, you'll find yourself declaring the favor of the Lord and things you didn't know. Now, I'm not talking about getting weird in this part, but I am talking about, I declare over you, favor's gonna hit you today. Now this, we know that the word says that you have the favor of God, but you can begin to declare. You're gonna meet someone today that's going to be a person of blessing that's going to bless you. You're going to see people come to Christ. 
you begin, and when you begin to flow, I'm talking about the flow of this, the Holy Spirit in you can trust you with more prophetic. Start off declaring what the word says and then pray in the spirit. And as you practice it during this fast, and you'll do this, if you'll do this, you'll begin to prophesy good things, prophesy the word, and then all of a sudden out of your, out of the abundance of your spirit, you're gonna declare some things like, there's a divine connection in this situation or that situation, doors are gonna open, God's gonna move you into this or that. And here's the, here's the release. If you miss it, that's all right. Just keep practicing, going back to practicing what he has said. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Don't get weird with it. Practice what he said but then his spirit's gonna flow and you'll find that other areas are gonna open up for you. They're going to be a blessing to you. Are you with me? Father, in Jesus' name, this is going to be a good fast for us. I speak protection as the enemy comes to try to defeat us or lie to us with moments of discouragement or shame or guilt. I speak that we all are not surprised by it because we are aware of the enemy and of his schemes and the way he operates. We're in this together. None of us are alone. We're not an island. We are in this together. Father, help us to find someone in the church that we're close enough to that we can share with. And if we need, call him and say, hey, share with me how all of my bills are paid according to his riches, how I prosper. Share with me how I am healed. Share with me how I am full of joy. And they don't need to go south with us, but they can begin to encourage us. Have, have us help one another through prayer ministry and encouragement, Lord. I ask you, Father, to make Enjoy Church truly a place of joy. To make it a place where it's spiritually deep, and yet at the same time, we have an environment that we can bring a brand new person in that isn't, that isn't going to get intimidated at all. I pray, Father, that this would become a place this year of 2021 of salvation, that we see people saved like never before. I pray, Father, that healing would take place at an accelerated rate. You chose us to be alive. You chose us to be together. You chose us to be here. We believe God for breakthrough. May it start at home. May it start in the church. May it start at both places. And may we meet in the middle with an explosion of revival. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm excited about this fast. I'm excited about this year, what God has in store for us all.